I've recently retired from NASA after 27 years with NASA, 10 years uh, in private industry, and I have um, been engaged by the embassy here in Qatar, in Doha, to give some lectures to students and to the general public about the benefit of investing in the space program, the benefit of educating people in, uh, in the space, and, and uh, space exploration in general. As you know that Qatar is launching a uh, satellite in 2010, and they're looking forward to launching another satellite in 2018. How do you see the, this program, this space program in Qatar? So I think that uh, in entering the space market by utilizing a commercial model, much like uh, um, a shale sat, so I'm having trouble with the pronunciation. How do you pronounce that? A shale. So I, I believe that entering the commercial market is a great way to get into the commercial space program. And um, I have heard that they are, um, they've reached the capacity of their first satellite. And so they need to launch the second satellite so they can continue to serve the needs of their customers. I think that's a fantastic, speaks volumes for the way the programs being run and for how, um, how effective the satellite must be in terms of serving uh, the Gulf region here. During your service uh, in NASA, what kind of cooperation between NASA and Qatar? So uh, over the course of my career, I haven't had any cooperation um, with, between NASA and Qatar, but as uh, Qatar emerges as a, 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 um, space, um, with a space program, there probably will be opportunities for scientists to engage with each other, to work together. And then maybe someday down the road, maybe there will be a project. Back to invest in, uh, in, in space, investment in, in, in space, you know, you're as you take put for what kind of uh, benefit from investment in space, uh, in the exploration and mining, uh, as you know, that Gulf is an uh, uh, mm -hmm. oil countries. So, there's lots of opportunity uh, when a country invests in space to do lots of different things. Um, some of the things that we've done at NASA is we put together a mission, a cooperative mission um, that looks at, uh, it measures actually the gravity, the change in gravity as satellites go around the Earth. And some really smart mathematicians have been able to turn that into changes in water tables. So you can see where the water is and isn't, where it's, whether or not it's rising or falling. And when you look at that, you can also um, see where the oil reserves are. So these satellites produce data that will be useful uh, for people that are trying to manage their own resources, for nations that are trying to manage their own resources. And I mean to use the technology that for to, to reduce the cost of the exploration. Like uh, certainly, it would be it would reduce the uh, the cost of exploration because it would tell you what regions to go explore on the ground. Yes. And how do you see the future challenge of this uh, industry, I mean, the space industry? So I see the future challenges of the space industry um, as one that um, engages commerce more effectively. Right. The the space industry up until really recently has been the domain of nations and governments. But now, space is getting available to everybody. And with things like the internet and cloud computing and um, crowdsourcing and the fact that the cost of satellites is coming down, it's, a, it's now available to more and more people, even private enterprise and commercial enterprise. How do you end up working in NASA? How did I end up working at NASA? Do you really want that story? <laughs> if anyone. So, when I was in college, in the mid 70s, the microchip was just becoming popular. And I had played with the microchip in my physics lab. I was a physics major at the time. And I had, um, 
looked at the, uh, the cash registers in grocery stores and I said, someday these are going to be um, enabled by microchip. There'll be computers in these cash, cash registers. Back then they were mechanical devices. And so when I was leaving college, I applied to become a designer of cash registers. Well, the mistake I made was that the cash register company, were, they weren't hiring physicists, they were hiring electrical engineers. And so what I did was, um, I did, well, I did not get hired by a cash register company, and so I had to go with my second choice, which was aerospace. And the aerospace industry was hiring physicists because at the time they were concerned about how to make satellites last longer in space uh, and the problem of radiation in space on the satellites. So that's how I ended up working in the aerospace industry and ultimately at NASA. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Ah, it's been a pleasure. Thank you.